about volume support and auto mode. Um, these modes came out with um, servo. So they, they started off with servo. I don't know if other ventilating companies are picking up on it and imitating it, but it started off with servo. Um, volume support, if I ask you what is volume support, you're going to tell me it's a pressure support mode that has a targeted tidal volume. And that pressure support will vary to achieve that targeted tidal volume or that set tidal volume. So instead of us trying to figure out, oh, it looks like the patient could use 10 of pressure support, they can use 12 of pressure support. Um, you set a targeted tidal volume, and the ventilator is going to adjust the pressure support up and down um, to ensure that tidal volume is reached. Now, if they're in volume support and they stop breathing, the ventilator will switch over to volume control and start ventilating the patient. But when it switches over to volume control, you get an alarm that doesn't go away. So even though it's ventilating the patient and you're giving breaths to the patient, the alarm continues. So that's one thing with apnea ventilation is the alarm doesn't go away once the ventilator kicks in and starts ventilating. You have to go there and switch modes of ventilation. <coughs> Or if you want to try them again, because a lot of times what happens is you're waiting for patients to wake up from their anesthesia. So they went to OR, they were given a lot of anesthesia, and you're just waiting for it to wear off before you want to extubate them and know that they're going to breathe okay on their own. And sometimes they'll wake up, breathe for a few minutes, and then fall back to sleep and stop breathing. Um, so if you're weaning them and they wake up and they start breathing and then they fall back to sleep, you'll get an alarm. But you've got to go there and either switch them back to full support, or you can try volume support one more time and try to wake the patient up and try it one more time. But if they keep falling asleep and going into apnea ventilation, probably you need to change into a, a full support mode for a little bit longer. You are caring for a patient who is on the servo eye ventilator in PRVC mode. You are asked to place the patient in volume support mode. How do you determine the proper tidal volume you want to target? So can you give me a range about how many mLs per kilo you think your patient should breathe? Five to seven. Very good. So normal tidal volume is five to seven mLs per kilogram, ideal body weight. So that's what you would target. And then how do you figure out how much pressure support is being generated to deliver the set tidal volume? Um, can we just look at the pressure support, right? I mean, it's a pressure support mode. Yeah, but there's no setting. Like, you can't look to see pressure support of like, 10 um, or whatever. Minus the P. Oh, yeah, so. Um, yeah. <coughs> the PIP minus the P. Yes. Um, so what you look for is the peak pressure, subtract the peak, and it's the delta P, that's your pressure support setting. So what if you're in volume support and the peak pressure is like 30 centimeters of water and the peak is 5? Yeah, that's a delta P of 25. And if you're getting normal tidal volumes back, what does that tell you about the patient's lungs and their ability to be weaned off the ventilator? Well, they're getting lots of help. They're stiff. Yeah. yeah, the lungs are stiff, and that means that they're going to need a lot of help. Mm -hmm. If you were to extubate them and they have to breathe with those stiff lungs, it's going to be really hard for them. They're not going to make it for very long. Um, so you always want to keep an eye on what the pressure support levels are. I mean, if somebody has a pressure support of 10, and they're doing great, that's a good indicator that they're ready to be extubated. Um, this is repeating what we just talked about. It says you set a target tidal volume. The ventilator will select the amount of pressure support to achieve the target tidal volume. You have to set flow cycle off, and you have to set a high pressure limit. Um, what does the flow cycle off do? It um, reduces eye tone mm -hmm. or increases it. And the breath. It ends the breath. The breath. So the pressure support breath, or in this case it's called the volume support breath, it ends when flow diminishes. And that's how it, the ventilator knows the patient is done breathing in. 
And sometimes their inspiratory times are really long. So we can kind of push the issue by changing the flow cycle off, make the breath end a little bit sooner so they don't have such long eye times. And then for a high pressure limit, why do you think that would be necessary if we're in pressure support? You didn't set a pressure, the ventilator selected it, so it may adjust to meet that cardiotidal volume, so it may go up really mm -hmm. high, and you don't want that. Very good. Yeah, the pressure support can go as high as your alarm set in trying to deliver a breath to the patient. So it can deliver high pressures if your alarms are set high. That's, yeah, that's one thing to be cautious of. All right, so that's it for volume support. Has anybody used it? Mm, no, I use auto with volume support. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think Nava. Nava. Yes. Yeah, it seems like these modes of ventilation, they, they go in style and they go out of style. Mm -hmm. um, I'll talk to you now about auto mode, but a few years ago, nobody was using auto mode. Broward wasn't using it, Memorial wasn't using it. So I took it out of the lecture notes, I took it out of the lab notes, and then I get feedback, hey, your students don't know anything about auto mode. It's like, well, is it being used? So now I'm teaching you volume support, and I don't know if anybody will even see it. All right, so let's talk about auto mode. Um, when auto mode is turned on, the ventilator switches from a full support mode to a spontaneous mode if the patient triggers one or two spontaneous breaths. The ventilator remains in the spontaneous mode as long as the patient triggers breaths. If the patient stops triggering breaths in a short period of time, the ventilator will switch back to delivering mandatory breaths. So it's kind of like it goes into backup ventilation, but you don't get any alarms. It just does it without setting off any alarms. Is auto mode really a mode? Or is it a switch? It's a, a switch. switch, yeah. It's not really a move. Yeah, it's just a switch. Um, so in PRVC, um, if you have auto mode on, it'll go into volume support if the patient takes one or two spontaneous breaths. So in that case, what needs to be set on the ventilator? For, for PRVC and volume support? Yeah. yeah so High pressure limit? Your high pressure limit? So you do your tidal volume, tidal volume FIO2, your PE, and your, yeah, your respiratory rate for PRVC. Okay. Um, your lungs. Okay. Flow cycle off. Flow cycle off for volume support. Oh, and then you will your trigger, trigger time. Yes, very good. Um, there's another button for auto mode, it's called trigger time. Trigger timeout. Yeah. Um, so if you have that set for 10 seconds, and 10 seconds goes by with no breaths, it's going to go back to full support. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, good. that's good. So so would this be a good method to use for waning ones? Because mm -hmm. you take, once they start taking spontaneous breaths, they completely switch to a brand new spontaneous mode where they can stay on for however long Yeah. until they stop taking breaths. Yeah, it was pretty much designed for post-op patients. Yeah. Um, once they start waking up, they'll start breathing. But if they fall asleep, you know, there's no alarms that go off. You don't have to run in there and switch modes. It just does it automatically. I haven't seen it used a lot. Well, me personally, I haven't seen auto mode. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody have a show of hands if you've seen auto mode? They use it probably. Yes. Yes. That's why they're like, they were so auto mode. Because when they sold it, I was like, what's auto mode? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we were all in front of that and they're trying to explain something like what. Yes. Yeah. I would put it in the reverse of the mechanical ventilation plan. This has a suggestion. 
It's good to know this. Yeah. It's, it's just being used moments. a lot, like at Four Hour General. Like he notice. he asked uh, John asked us to you know point out something on the ventilator, which was auto mode, but we had never even learned it. And he was like, "Well, why don't you guys know this?" Yeah. Um, I remember that thing specifically. Yeah. Was this during May June or? This was the beginning of the summer. Yeah. Summer, yeah. I asked this too. Yeah, I can do that. I can put it into the first year. Because it's a simple concept. Mm -hmm. it's, I thought it was going to be way more complicated than it was. Oh, you did? Yeah. Like, the the PRVC is way more complicated than it was. Can you teach it when I teach volume support? Oh, that's yeah. good, yeah. Right. Maybe there's some stuff I can take out that's not being taught. I don't mm. know why. Um, like anything else that is not here. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's true. I've the most I've seen is being controlled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Never seen one. If you go to different areas of the country, mm -hmm. you see it. So it's just getting ready for like the whole state, basically. It's wherever you want to work. Yeah. Yeah. The nation. The nation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so the Servo Y reps have been, I don't know if I'm repeating myself, um, but they were very proactive in this area with Broward General and Memorial. Always available. You need something and they're, they show up or they're on the phone right away. So the hospitals became almost complete Servo and everything that has to do with Servo and everything else, they just kind of went by the wayside. Like Puritan Bennett, I think that's like the number one selling ventilator in the world. But the reps around here were terrible. <laughs> oh. you, know, you call them, they don't come. You ask for an in-service, they're too busy, they don't show up. And who wants to buy a ventilator from somebody like that? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah the, and you'll see Pure Dementia or the PBA 40s everywhere. Yeah, I do see a lot of You saw it in Texas? Yeah. Lisa told us about this one, I think it's Fortran or Fortran. Um, and it's like, it's, used up the it's, a it's plastic, the it's for transportation, it's literally like mm -hmm. just three mm -hmm. pieces of plastic put mm -hmm. together, it has a peak valve, pressure valve, and you hook it up to a flow meter, and it's, no here. electric? No. Yeah, it's it's just a genetic. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, you're talking about that then. Like That's for MRI, sure. isn't it? If it's made out of plastic, it, because yeah. it can't sometimes because it has metal springs. Um, one of the therapists said they used to use something like that. Mm -hmm. No idea, but I wonder if there's. Mm -hmm. It's called. How do you spell it? Um, I'm gonna look it up. Thanks for the. Yeah, it's plastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Voltran or Flotran, I'll look it up and see. Yeah, I, can, I can text this and ask her. Okay. All right, so in with auto mode, you're switching between PRVC and volume support, and it sounds like that's what you've seen. Uh, but you could also switch between pressure control and pressure support, or volume control and volume support. So you have um, more than just the PRVC volume support. Um, how can you tell which mode the patient is currently in? Um, doesn't the auto mode kind of turn into a different color? Mm -hmm. You get and a then, green light with the auto mode. Right. Which that means, means that you're in the spontaneous, spontaneous. side of it. Um, you'll see uh, pink every time the patient initiates a breath in the graphics. So patient initiates breath, turns pink. Um, how can you tell the amount of time that the patient has been breathing spontaneously or has been receiving full support? You have to go into trends. Trends? Yes, so open trends. I see what the doctors do. Oh, really? Trends very often, yeah. 
Because it's possible you could walk in the room and you say, oh, the patient's breathing spontaneously. But have they been breathing spontaneously for the last two hours since the last time I was in here? How are you supposed to know? Are they switching back and forth? Like one minute they're full support and they wake up. Um, so the only way to know is to look at the trends and use your cursor to go along the last two hours to see um, what the respiratory rate was and, and what breaths were spontaneous. Auto mode is designed for patients waking up from anesthesia and sedation. Um, it can also be used as a weaning mode. It's not recommended for patients who have a high work of breathing because the, patient, the ventilator will not provide any support to the patient. Um, so that goes along with um, TRBC, with volume support. The harder the patient is working, the less the ventilator helps them. Initiating and moving good volume. between the servo I and the servo S? Yeah, they both can have compressors. Um, the servo I can be used for infants through adults. The S, just adults. And... I've never seen that, so maybe I have. Oh, adults and pediatrics, just no neonates. So servo I serves, I guess, all across the board versus servo S is the one that only does peds and adults? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have written down that the servo I has all the bells and whistles, <laughs> and the servo S is for adults and pediatrics, not neonates. All the bells and whistles. Um, do you think the servo S has NAVA? No. No, nope, it doesn't. And when you're adding an external flow to run a nebulizer that you've added to the circuit, um, this tells you why that's not a good idea. Um, when you add an external flow, you're increasing the size of the tidal volume. Remember, that's not a big deal for adults because it increases, what, about 110 mLs, I think? Um, so if you increase an adult's tidal volume 100 mLs for 10 minutes, it's okay. That's okay, but do that with pediatrics. That's um, a lot of barotrauma trauma and value trauma. It'll change the FiO2 being delivered because you're, if you're running it from a flow meter connected to 50 psi O2, now you're um, increasing the percentage of oxygen. The nebulizer will nebulize during exhalation. That's going to waste the medication. It negates the low volume alarm. So if you're adding seven liters a minute to your circuit and your patient stops breathing, you're not going to get a low volume alarm because you're adding all this extra volume to the circuit. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that happens is the ventilator cannot sense the patient's inspiratory effort when you have a nebulizer in line. Because of the flow? Yeah. yeah. So at that point, would you just change it? Well, pressure wouldn't make a difference either then, right? Yeah, you could change it over to pressure, pressure. sensitivity during Meanwhile. the treatment. Okay. Yeah. And that's it. That's it? Yeah, so the 840, I'm not going to tell you about because you guys aren't using it. <laughs> we don't see it. Thank <laughs> you. 